Hey guys, Metzger from GI Bro, and today we'll be installing the Harbor Freight Trailer Light Kit on my tilt trailer. Now you're gonna need some tools for this. You're gonna need a 716 socket, some pliers, screwdrivers. I used a drill, wire strippers, a crimper, and definitely you're gonna need a stapler for all the wires. Start off by disconnecting all your wires under your trailer. That way when you pull out all your lights, you're not hung up and you can just pull them right on the back side. Use your 716 sockets, undo the nuts on the back. That way you can just pull it off. Now, if these are rusted, don't worry about it. The new kit comes with brand new hardware. You can just toss this. The same goes for the license plate holder as well. That metal piece just toss out, it's useless. The installation kit comes with everything you need. It comes with a pair of tail lights, some side markers, a full length of wire, as well as the hardware and the license plate holder. The lights are easy, well marked, so you know what side they go on. It's not universal. My trailer license plate holder needs to be modified because the holes didn't light up with the existing ones. So I just marked the back of it, took my drill, and drilled both sides. With the holes drilled on the plate, now I can start mounting my new tail lights. Fortunately, the nuts and bolts lined up perfectly with the factory holes on the trailer, so I didn't have to really modify anything. I just took the new hardware, screwed it on, and I was good to go. Now, make sure you don't pinch the wires behind the tail light because you want to make sure it's nice and flush. When you're using your 716 sockets, don't over tighten because the plastic definitely can crack and break and you don't want that. On the passenger side, it's pretty much exactly the same. You're just not using a trailer uh, plate bracket, so everything else should be exactly the same. The side markers need a little bit more work. I unscrewed the lenses because they were all cracked and damaged and definitely not usable. And then I noticed that behind them was some rivets, so I just drilled those out because I'm not gonna be able to reuse them. I pulled the light out, ripped the wires out, and then I just cleaned out the holes because I was gonna try and reuse them. Side markers were much smaller than the previous ones. And with the, uh, the ground tab and the wire, it was just easier to run through some side holes, but I couldn't get it to line up perfectly. So I used some self tappers because it was a lot easier. It went in nice and clean and I could line it up where I thought it looked better. The existing wiring was just shot. It was falling apart. The insulation was crap. The way it was run was just really inefficient and really poor. So I'm going to use the brand new wiring just because why not? It's nice and clean and it's well marked. I start off by tying it to the old harness and then pulling it through the frame. That way it was nice and clean. You don't see it and it's just easy to pull it right through the center. After that, I took some staples and I started running down the center. I want to make it nice and streamlined and nice and clean. In the back, I pulled out all the old wiring. It was all junk and just useless. I continued pulling the new wires to the back and started stapling. Now, at this point, you branch the greens to the passenger side and then the yellow and browns to the driver's side. That way, it lines up with the lights. It's all color-coded. Once all the wires are run, now I can start connecting the wires. Now, the manual says that you can use the wire nuts right at behind the lights, but I didn't want those wire nuts exposed to where people might pull them or step them or loosen them. So I'm using buck connectors with a little bit of a pigtail, and then I'll use the, um, the wire nuts under the trailer so it's a little bit more hidden, a little bit more protected from just people tugging and pulling from them. I also use some shrink wrap to pull over top of these that way um, the connections were nice and dry and it was just a little bit easier and cleaner look. Once I put the, uh, the shrink wrap over top, I used to use a lighter on, you know, to show you you can use it, but if you have a heat gun, a heat gun works much better. Under the trailer, I'm gonna use the wire nuts to make all my connections. The green to the green, brown to the brown, and yellow to the yellow. I wanna make sure everything's nice and clean and as close to the bottom of the trailer as possible. That way no weeds or branches can get caught as I'm backing into the woods or anything like that. So no sharp bends and just make it look nice. Now the last lights we have to wire up are the side markers. Mine are located towards the front of the trailer, which is a little bit more of a challenge because I don't have enough wire from the existing kit. That's not a problem because I have plenty of extra wire, but just make sure that when you're doing this, you calculate that out. That way, if you have to stop the, uh, the store to get some extra wire. So I have two more leads. I'm cutting the brown wire near the tilt mechanism center of the trailer. I'm taking a wire nut and I'm just gonna splice it together. I'm gonna staple everything just like I've been doing before, nice and streamlined. You wanna make sure all the wires are going up and down and nothing can get caught by branches and twi uh, twigs and sticks and anything like that as you're backing into the woods. And then I'm gonna take a wire nut, put that together, staple it up, and then just make it nice and clean so it's up and out of the way and it's just safe. The final part of the installation is gonna be your ground wire. It's gonna be the white wire on your wiring harness that's located at the front of the trailer by the trailer hitch. 
I'm gonna use an eyelet to get a really good connection and something that's not gonna pull out through the center of the trailer. Using a nut and a bolt, I'm just gonna put it through a hole to the side of the frame and we're gonna torque it down so it's not gonna go anywhere. Now let's test this. Take your wiring harness, plug it into the vehicle or whatever adapter you might have, hit the lights, and there it is, it works. Flashing, side markers, awesome. All right guys, this is awesome when our plan comes together and the lights work the first time, no messed wires or anything. But the Harbor Freight Trail light kit came with everything we needed. It was a simple install. I just added a few extra wires because I had some existing lights I wanted to incorporate in. But if you're gonna go with a standard three light or four light setup, you're gonna have no problems as long as you're under the 80 inches. But if you have any questions or problems or if you're getting into a bind, just hit me up. I'll try and walk you through it. Otherwise, as always, have a great night and support the troops. Thanks.